Hey everybody, thanks for watching. So now I put out a while ago a DVD on the Moors talking about you know the history of the Moors and what the Moors are and basically what the origin of Moors is. It's a lot of misunderstanding about the Moors that I broke down in the video, but a lot of people are still on the fence. A lot of people still have questions about the Moors and really understanding who these people really are. Now, the thing is, you need to understand, one, a more, more means black. That's just, get that out of the way. More means black. More is basically who the Greeks were referring to when they were speaking about a learned or educated black person. If you were more, you was a sophisticated black person, you was an educated person, you were separate to them from the rest of the Africans. And it's just basically how they described it. You need to understand that you have the Moors that existed before the trade, and you have the other Moors who are basically trying to represent for the power they lost when it was basically double-crossed by the uh, colonists, which would be the so-called Islamic Moors. And you need to understand what took place with all that. So we're going to go into this because people need to understand what these people are and uh, what took place. So again, as I talked about in the DVD, you had the Moors basically join with the Muslims and go ahead and, ha and help the Muslims basically uh, conquer African territories and enslave Africans. This is a proof of fact. You had later with uh, Leopold and with uh, other European uh, conquerors, the Moors joined these people and help in the genocide and mass murder of African people. We know about that. I mean, we know that you had the Moors go into uh, Morocco, you had the Moors go into uh, Spain via Morocco, cross the Straits of Gibraltar into the uh, Iberian Peninsula, and basically conquer into Spain and enslave those people. So you have a history of the Moors that is vast, that is long, and the main part of it begins with Islam. Before that, it's just not so much information you're going to find as far as the fact that the Moors were teaching. And as I said in the video, when you have people talking about Europeans going into Africa to learn, they wasn't just going into Egypt. They was going into other parts of Northern Africa, mainly from Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, where you had Romans in Libya. And there was learning from the Moors, which, as I said, were learned Africans. So let's just get that history out the way. You had at some point when Islam was coming about, something happened to where a group of Moors basically joined with this with these people. Now, this is a part of the history that a lot of them talk about. But you have when you go and look up more, you have it pertaining to Islam. When it's just not so, it was Moors that existed before Islam. Now, and I doubt that any more would say that they uh, do not predate Islam as far as when we have the Quran coming into play. I doubt they would admit that. So we can just put that on the table. So you have once the colonies was being set up in uh, America, you have Morocco. First, acknowledging the colonies or acknowledging America as being, you know, a sovereign, you know, country. You have the treaty of peace and friendship between Morocco and these people in America, and this is what a lot of uh, the Moors speak to. So understand one: while you were enslaved, while Africans was enslaved, while we was being, you know, raped and tortured and beaten. You had the Moors walking around as these intelligent people who basically, you know, was free and allowed it to happen. See, a lot of people getting caught up in how smart some of these people seem to be, but you're not paying attention to exactly what they're saying. So they, they'll claim, well, we wrote the Constitution. They stole it from us. Okay. We did all this and all that and everything we did with these people and they stole, they stole, they stole. We was in America first and blah, blah, blah. What the hell were you doing while we was enslaved? So while we was enslaved and in chains, these people was mingling with the slave owners. 
It was the Moors who taught these people how to build. It was the Moors who taught these people how to lay out Washington, D.C. and more laid out Washington, D.C. And the Moors taught them how to build Capitol building and White House and everything else. It was the Moors that taught all this stuff. The Moors taught them so much information, gave them so much information, wrote the Constitution according to them, and put so many things in place as far as the powers or the, uh, the uh, let's just say, how America was going to be run by these Europeans. The Moors claimed fame as how they set all this stuff up. And what I want people to understand is to step back and don't fall for how smart some of these people may seem and what they are saying. You need to look past all that and understand that how can you sit there and say that you was in America before these people and that you taught them all this stuff. And during this time, you teaching and you doing, you doing everything that you're doing, that you're claiming, but we was enslaved. The rest of the black people was enslaved. And you see some pictures out there where even some of the human zoos, you had moors there. You know, when you see these black people, you see that fez, you know these are moors. Plain and simple. So it wasn't no slaves walking around in the plantation with no damn fez on or with no damn turban on. These were moors. These were the traitors. These were the people who basically gave them information to help them enslave us. And what happened was they were supposed to get whatever they were supposed to get. And they got double crossed by these colonists, by these Europeans, and they mad about it. So this is what all this stuff is about today. They walking around saying they did this and they did that. But all it is, is Moors trying to get you to join their side and say, you are a Moor. How come we wasn't Moors when we was enslaved? They want to say, no, you're a Moor. You're a Moor. We wasn't, we wasn't Moors when we was enslaved. Y'all wasn't screaming that shit when we was in slavery that all these black people were Moors, you got to set them free. No, nah, y'all was too busy trying to cut a fucking deal. Y'all was too busy trying to cut a deal. We wasn't Moors when we was in bondage and being hung. And y'all was out eating lobster and shrimp or what have you and, and dining with these fucking white folks and living like kings while we was in bondage. But they want you to say or to believe that you was a Moor just like they is and you got some kind of stake of claim to America all you got to do is follow these rules and do these certain things with the legal system. And America just going to accept you as one of the elite or some shit. Come on. Now, the Moors got a lot of information about, you know, how to, how to appear in court. You know, what the whole court system is about. How to address the judge and what to say or what have you. And all that stuff is all well and good. But any real conscious person is not trying to, you know, deal with this system at all. You know, in any kind of capacity. And being conscious is not about trying to conform to the system that has basically uh, been destroying us, but how to get rid of the system altogether. That is our ultimate goal, not to just, you know, say that I'm a moor and try to conform and fit the system. That's a system that's, you know, crooked. If they want to accept it, they'll accept it. You know, all the stuff that you kick in the sand in court, if they want to take it, they'll take it and say, well, you know, it's the law. What moral code or what kind of code is going to bond them to accepting everything that you say when these people have stolen their position? So they're obviously thieves and they have no honor. So why would we expect them to just follow, you know, what we're saying because we said it some type of way in court? That shit don't make sense. You know, it sound all well and good until you in that position. And then, you know, they might let you out that courtroom, but you don't know what's going to happen after that. You know, you, you, you're too smart. You might tell somebody and they might be worried about that. Now, next thing you know, you're dead. You shot or some kind of accident happened because you was in the courtroom saying too many smart things. Not saying that to deter people from going there to defend themselves, but you got to realize that this is something that they are not going to let everybody do. You know, I don't care how well you speak. They're not going to allow us to basically, you know, render their entire court system law because we learned some shit from the Moors. It's not going to work like that. So you got to take that into consideration. But to understand also that these people want you to basically... To basically take their side and their whining and boohooing about how they got double crossed. Because that's basically what it comes down to. Whatever deal that they struck with the white man, whatever they was going to get, whatever they were supposed to get for teaching them all this information and write so called writing the Constitution and all this other stuff that they did, they got double crossed, they got screwed out of, and now they bitter. They pissed off. So I talked about before, one, how. When you look at the inner understanding of the Moors, how it goes back to Islam, 
and how we can look at the Shriners, which is a part of Freemasonry, and how it goes back to Islam, both wearing the fez, and how we can look at the KKK and how it translates into Islam. Hmm, what the hell is going on? As I said, these people walking around with these fez on these white men ain't wearing this fez that says Islam because they are Muslims. This, this stuff is deeper. You know, these people are a part of an old order that have existed for hundreds of years. They have basically taken over. And that's what this stuff is about. Now, you have some Moors with the knowledge who understand what this stuff is about. And to them, Islam don't mean Islam. You know, this stuff don't mean what the average, you know, uh, uh, religious Muslim believer believe to them because they know what the hidden stuff is. They know what the hidden meaning is. So when you see these people with these feathers on, it says Islam to them. It means I self, law, and master. We could say it means Isis, Ra, El, but everybody got different interpretations for it. To them, it means I self, law, and master. To them, it means all law, not Allah, all law, law. They're always talking about the legal system. All law, law. What is law? What are we talking about? This goes back to just the cosmic law of attraction, the law of the universe, the law of math, the law of physics, and what all this stuff really digs into when you get into the Bible, the Torah, the Quran deeply. This is what it's all speaking into. This is what it's speaking to. They use this information to put themselves in a position that they are in. So basically what you have in Islam is the codes of what they use to build, to understand about uh, science, about physics, about astronomy, what have you, all coded in these books, which is why, as I said before, when you go into every Masonic Lodge, you're going to find a Quran, a Torah, a Bible, because all this stuff is hidden in there. So when you see these so-called, you know, Moors and these Shriners walking around with those fezzes on, this is what they really speak to. They ain't praising no damn Allah as being a God. Deep down in the inner core, they know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. And for you Moors, wannabe Moors, who think that you're just going to jump onto the Moor bandwagon and be with the Moors, and you're a damn Mason, you're part of the KKK. Plain and simple, because this, they're all in cahoots. All this stuff, all this stuff goes back to each other. All this stuff is all blended into one uh, big uh, secret society that's running all this shit. And it all goes back to the people who basically took control of America, took it over, and are now in power. So the Moors want you to refer back to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship with uh, America and Morocco and claim you know, yourself as a Moor and not as being black or what have you or white. And this is why they get into the whole black white thing, because it deals with legal terms, the legal ramifications of saying that you're black or white. The point is, it doesn't it doesn't fix our situation. It fix a situation for you personally. And if you want to feel, you know, all good and say that you are more and feel like you got some kind of knowledge that you smart, you what is that? You are basically conforming to the white man's law. That's all you're doing. You're not you're not liberating your people. You're not helping your people. They want to grow their numbers and try to get you to join them. But you need to understand that in essence, all you are doing is conforming to the white man's law. Plain and simple. And then you're going to sit in some group or some secret society and act like you're smarter than everybody else while everybody else is, is being shot and killed in the streets and starving in fucking poverty. But you want to walk around with a damn fez on your head and act like you're better than people because you conform to the white man's law. Come on. So I had a more send me an email with a video about all these movies talking about uh, referring to Moors, you know, it's just it was a video it was just in so many different movies like Robin Hood and uh, uh, I think it was Black Knight with Martin and uh, a bunch of other movies just referring to black people as Moors. And nobody is debating the existence of Moors in ancient times. Of course, I talked about that. Of course, they existed. Of course, they civilized the world. They civilized the Dark Ages, I should say. And um, they gave knowledge to the Europeans. Nobody is doubting that. But I look deeper at the situation. First of all, one, when I when I go back and look, who who are these Moors? You know, where do they get this knowledge from? We know a lot of people had knowledge and a lot of people was teaching in northern Egypt and northern Africa. 
But most of these people was going into Egypt and getting their knowledge and getting their information, which so many uh, scholars attest to. So as I said in the video, we can't sit back and just, you know, say Kemet, 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 and, you know, point to the, the Greeks and the Romans who admit going into Kemet and learning. We got to remember that, you know, this is still Africa, this North Africa. So, of course, Africans was going in there and getting information long before Europeans. So they were smart as well. But it goes back to Kemet.